Hello and welcome. My name is Mark Blatstein, the physician founder of Physician Pre-Sentence Report Service. Welcome to my new website. A little bit easier, or I say a lot easier for you to navigate once you get here. There's an email address, phone number. It's Physician Pre-Sentence Report Service, which is pprsus.com. Today, mostly I'm going to be talking to those that are legally and illegally involved in the drug business. Doctors in particular, while it was outside, this is not part of my scope of practice or experience, um, I will try nail on some common themes. So doctors were charged with Matt Perry's death due to ketamine overdose. And I realized since this story broke, there was, there's been a lot of other uh, nuances or players, if you will, in it. But I thought that fentanyl was the worst I was going to see six months, a year ago. And ketamine just kind of takes the cake. Um, ketamine is a range of drugs that is used in general anesthesia during surgery. And in, it has to be monitored. And subsequent to this article coming out, I did some Googling online. And I literally found, apparently, reputable companies that would mail you ketamine and kits, syringes for you to do it at home. And I guess it's okay. And I guess it's illegal. And I'm not passing, you know, I'm not giving medical advice here. No medical advice, no legal advice. But it definitely took my uh, breath away. I was like surprised. But at some point, it became an aid from jumped from being used to sedate individuals and for mental health conditions. But it's still dangerous. And so when it's being used during surgery, it is you're monitored. Even if it's one anesthesiologist physician per several operating room suites, there's always a nurse anesthetist per each room. My name is Mark Blatstein. I've been where you are, and I'm here to help you on your, your journey. With work, I was able to get my license back and my career reinstated. And so, yes, I was convicted of a felony um, back almost 20 years ago, but Yet I also could get my license back. Prison is temporary. While it seems kind of counterintuitive, preparation for release or at least considering considering it before you get to your pre-sentence interview is a start in the right direction. It, it sounds complicated and as I said, counterintuitive, but it definitely has merit. And this is something judges want to hear. And as you think about it and we have the conversation, it makes sense. They may do something completely different. You may wind up doing something completely different but think about it, having a plan and a daily routine before you enter prison day one and knowing what to expect when you get there, because I didn't. And a lot of what I go through on this website and in person, I didn't know. Unfortunately, I learned by, you know, the school of hard knocks, very hard knocks is a good way to start because prison is temporary. Eventually, you're going to go home and the people that work there stay there. I mean, this is their world all the time, you know, 24-7, 365 through COVID and out the other side. So there is a superseding indictment um, for those you can go on the website and a post and see it that goes through everything that was involved and knock your heads out and read it. But I mean, it's a big deal. And this goes for this doesn't mean, you know, fentanyl is that is like, OK, because it's not that can kill you, too. But for some doctors that are in the pain management business, there are more prescriptions for for mental health, for pain management, for from family practitioners, internal medicine, family practitioners, than there are from pain management doctors. Let me repeat that. The majority of pain prescriptions for pain opioids and harder type drugs come from, not from pain management doctors, but come from family practitioners. And so it's something to think about because Department of Justice, HHS, they have an entire unit a, fraud, a white collar fraud unit and their analytical department, it, they watch for, um, as you bill Medicare, Medicaid, private carriers, when they start seeing a change in billing practices for individual practices, group practices, hospital systems, something out of the ordinary, once they begin looking, you're toast. Have you ever had a patient that made your way into your practice in your heart where you were tempted to give in, but you didn't? And it could have been just an innocent thing, but you know, the hairs went up your back in the mix. Matthew Perry was a charming guy, heartwarming, hilarious Chandler being who America adored, but behind the camera, he struggled with a mark, a much darker 
reality of al alcohol and opioid addiction. And that's a lot of people. You know, and in his final, final years, he wanted to leave a legacy of helping other addicts and publish his memoir, Friends, Lovers, and Big Terrible Things. And I have, you know, links to all of these things here. <clears throat> he left his part of his legacy. And you can look this up again online. The links are right here. But physicians, continue practicing, putting your pet patient's best interests first. If you're in family practice and you see your practice tilting this way where you're finding it easy to give prescriptions for pain management or for people who have you know mental health issues, you, know, you want to see if there's from your medical board, if there are, if they have support policies and practices that you need to instill in your practice. Because remember, DOJ, HHS has a fraud unit just for this purpose. And right here, this is the 2025 Organized Crime Drug Enforcement Task Force. Congressional Jurist Justification Organized Crime. This is an entire packet you can open up here. I think it's 90 pages. <clears throat> Just addressing this. And we're not even in 25. And I came across this online. And this is from 2022. This is the National Drug Control Policy. And so, you know, if you find yourselves, if you feel that the FBI is asking questions, you know, among your patients, which happened to me, and I thought it was a big mistake. And lo and behold, no, it was for real. Um, no Medicare fraud, no Tricare fraud, nothing like that. But it was for, it was, it was involved billing before my, my center got the actual certification from AAAHC and JCAH. But I did it. It's my responsibility. And unfortunately, it was my crime. But if you, once they ask questions, you need to seek, you need legal representation right away. You can call me afterwards and get, you know, information on what you can do because you, know, you just need to, you need a, an attorney who practices federal criminal defense in federal court. I can help you with other things that are non-legal related. Um, but this is a, unfortunately, opioid drug abuse is not going away. It's a disease. People need to be treated and they can be treated successfully. It's in all families or at least, you know, six, six degrees of separation is probably closer. I hope you have found this helpful. I appreciate you taking the time to listen in and happy to have a good day.